create uh, better cinema? Why do we why do we have directors uh, creating their own uh, stories of horror ideas from there, where we actually have so many organic? Yeah, we have you know such a such a uh, legacy of. Um, you know, uh, literary works that we must tap into, but I do think increasingly people are uh, filming books, uh, novels. So, but I don't know why it hasn't caught on as a trend. I would think it's a much easier to take than you know actually put in the effort yourself to um, you know write write a story. Um, but it's interesting to know that a lot of a lot of books book rights are now being uh, bought and people are yeah. So I think it's it's a good time now. It's true that like, I have my friends Ravi Subramanian, Mahendra Jakar, their books have been bought, uh, their rights have been bought for things. Maitha is there, Rekha, both. They are like creating such great kind of movies, uh, you know, so thank you very much for coming here anyway. No, I also think a, a lot of our, you know, people don't know how to adapt a lot of our classical literary works. That's, that's the, most often we've ended up making period films around those classics based on I mean based on those classics you know uh, contemporary literature has is only now being delved into it's a pity because you know we have the stories yeah and it's better written and a lot of films that have been based on books have been extremely successful <laughs> your first major really feature that, happened, course, that was adapted yeah. from a book because uh, there like the next one uh, adapting books is kind of, uh, you know, so how was your experience with that? The, 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 you must have read the book and as uh, uh, the script, the... I actually read a translated version of uh, Parinita before I read the script. Uh, or rather, I read the script first and then I read the translated version. Um, and it's, it's interesting because what they did is, even though we were making it as a period film, they adapted it to or within a certain period. So that defined a lot of goings on in the film, um, which I think was very interesting. Otherwise, I haven't really, um, I've read a, a couple of, for example, I read, um, I read, uh, what? Five, no, no, five point someone before it got made into a book. So you know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's the only experience as far as reading a book and then seeing it translate into script. <laughs> uh, now this is a serious question, Piyush. When I read the book, I found that you... Does that somehow hamper with the objectivity of both the writer and the reader? So, you know what, I'm, I'm actually a graduate in psychology and I've, I've uh, ever since uh, I was in college, I had empathy for uh, people who are mentally ill. Uh, and I've always uh, held, and uh, it's borne out that uh, mental health in India is is something which is not really looked at in in its all its seriousness. You know, just yesterday there was an article in the DNA that 6.5 percent of the Indian population is mentally ill, and serious mental illness is there. Okay, so to to me, uh, uh, what happens is that, and I, I mentioned that in my afterward that happens is when there is some mentally ill person you kind of in your family you kind of you know push that person away never talk about that person in uh, out in the open and sort of look at it as some sort of a blight that has come onto your family etc that's our tradition culture culturally we are very uh, you know uh, intolerant towards that so my empathy will always be towards a person who is mentally ill and I believe that a serial killer has also got a mental health problem, a, a mental illness. So, my question is, where there is a person who is evil, his acts are evil, is it because he is an evil person or is it because he is ill? We need to examine that. So, And that is basically a global phenomenon. Uh, you know, people have been examining it all around the world, whether serial killers are actually bad people or they need our help. So that's the attack that I've taken. Of course, having said all this stuff, I, I write it in, inside a thrilling story, but that's like the underlying, you know, take away from the book. Yeah. Vidya, as an actress, if you're given a character which is dark and despicable. I think, you know, uh, 
I can comfortably say that it's only now that I'm actually willing, maybe I'm ready to delve into my dark side as an actor. So far, if there were scripts where there were characters I was uncomfortable with, you know, uh, which, which were inherently dark, I would just shy away from them. But something, obviously, you know, I, I guess it's called growth and evolution. Uh, that I, I now feel ready to delve into that side of uh, my personality because I know it exists there. When I'm playing the character, I'm not sure I require that objectivity. You know, uh, I haven't played that kind of dark character so far, so I don't know how, uh, you know, I really work within that. But uh, having said that, with every other character, when I'm when I'm really playing a character, I'm really invested in her. At that time, I really believe in everything that she does. So I I lack objectivity at that time, which I think is fine. <laughs> There's a hallmark of a good, as, good the, as long as I, when I come back home, I know that you know if I'm playing a serial killer, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no better in that. Thankfully, hopefully. Piyush, <laughs> um, in this particular film, the, in this particular book, sorry, I'm already talking about the film. Uh, you yourself admitted through one of the characters that uh, the genre of serial killing fiction or uh, the idea of a serial killer is not taken very seriously in India, in the Indian context. That uh, they say that we do not have enough uh, instances of serial killing in India, that it's American popular fiction based on either certain incidents which happen more heinous than my own characters. The, 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 the point that I was trying to make is that, look, it has just been ignored in this country. People always say, no, 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 this is not our country. It's all in America. No, it's in India. Nobody is paying attention to it. The police don't have uh, the, uh, the, the forensic uh, knowledge or, or let's say the forensic bent of mind to kind of map how to catch a serial killer and sort of see where similar modus operandi is, you know. Like in the case of, there is a, I'll just cite a case, there is a person uh, in Bangalore called Cyanide Mohan who killed 12 ladies, 12 women and the same bus stop in Mysore, okay, over a period of, of one and a half years, in the same bus stop, in the same uh, ladies' toilet of the same bus stop, okay, by giving them cyanide, but the police never put it together that there was a serial killer, 12. So, the, the point is that nobody can, you know, here, the, the, the detection is very loose. Therefore, my idea was also to bring out how it's it, uh, Cyanide Mallika was a serial killer. The Gavit sisters, they were, uh, two, who were not, not mentioned in my book, but there are Gavit sisters in Pune who were serial killers. So there have been a uh, case of two or few women, but mostly it is uh, it, it's a male domain. So uh, we're coming to the end of our pre willing session. Before we open it to the audience, we shall unveil the another book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, can, can we have the Q&A before? If there's any the questions, before we yeah, please be seated. Okay. You also study Raman Raghav, who's supposed to be the biggest yeah. serial killer. Yeah, I have, actually. So and there's, there's a, a film people. also done by Sri, Sri Ram, Sri yeah, Raghavan. Yeah, yeah, Sri Raman, actually. Yeah, he did a, it's a diploma film, which he did long back. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Yeah. I, I, I did study that and uh, yeah, so he's the more known serial killer uh, of that day. And Otto Shankar and you know, there are a few others, the beer man, the, you know, yeah. the stone man and stuff like that. They have it. Stone man is, yeah. But mine was like a very unique serial killer. Completely fictional. Yeah. Mine is. Okay. One more question. Another question. There's a very important reason why I have, but I cannot reveal it to you, you'll have to read the book to understand why I have used that title. And it's very important, very important. Thank you for asking. Yeah, Ravi, Ravi Subramanian, uh, best-selling author, Mike the front, he, is, he would like to ask a question, he's always asked questions. Thank you Ravi for joining <laughs> us this evening. Thank you. Uh, you a couple of questions, quick ones. One, it's a very intriguing uh, cover. 
and who is the model in the what, what I don't know. It was, it was done by uh, the designer uh, in uh, Delhi uh, with, with in, in, in conjunction with these programs. It's fabulous. And is this a part of the series or is this a standalone book? If it does well, then it will become a series. <laughs> yeah. And no, are, you, are you planning to shift genres after this? Or you can no, I'm planning to make a movie. Yaar. Abhi ho ho gaya. Char kitab likh diya. Abhi film ho, uske baad next book. But you have a contract with Westland. Yeah, my next book is also there. So I've done that already. Uh, so this, this last language the... can be expunged from the <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll have to wrap up the QA and catch up one is to one yeah. later. Now let's uh, we're just gonna reveal open the book and we're gonna have the unwrapping and unveiling of the covers to present to you. Rochester India's